right, let's see how this, Seth, if you want to check and see how this sounds to our folks who are viewing remotely. Oh, okay, I'll keep talking. Again, we thank you for your patience as we get our technical issues fixed this morning. I'm just going to keep talking. Hopefully, if you're online, you can respond that you are indeed hearing me okay. Hopefully. Okay, louder, all right. Okay, um, let me make an adjustment. Read it real quick. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being patient. Still testing the sound in the lectern this morning. Okay. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. It's a little rainy outside for my taste. Uh, Y'all don't want to hear that. <laughs> That'd be a bit too much excitement this morning. It's good to see you all this morning. Good to be back in the building for our second Sunday in a row inside. It is wild to me that it is already November. Uh, time has been flying by, especially lately. Hope everyone had a pleasant uh, holiday yesterday, some fun candy gathering and, and trick or treating or trunk or treating or whatever activity that you had yesterday. Keep going, all right. Y'all can, can probably tell stand up would not be a, a good career option for me. I can, okay. All right, well, it's open to Isaiah chapter eight, so. Um, Moreover, the Lord said unto me, take thee a great roll and write it in with a man's pen concerning Mahershal Ahashbaz. And I took unto me faithful witnesses to record, just so happens this is a passage with a lot of names in it. Fun <laughs> funny that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's Uriah the priest and Zechariah and Jeberechiah. All right, so now, if you test the pen held, you know. these books in here. Okay. All right, good morning. This is a handheld test. Can you hear me okay? Okay. So if you'll sort of talk into both microphones. Into both of them? Yeah. Okay. I know. All right. Okay, I think you're good. I think we're, can you tell me? Okay. Oh, actually, no, we'll be finished. We'll test that. Bear with us. <laughs> funny. That's really funny. Funny. <laughs> How about that airline food? What's the deal with that airline food? You know, hey, I found out last night, you, want, you know what candy you don't want at Halloween? The Watchima COVID. You don't want that at all, trust me. Were those the, the, the black and orange ones that have the label that you're not sure where they came from? Right. Yeah. What's the deal with that candy? I don't know. I don't know. What's up with that? How much does a chimney cost? <laughs> Nothing. It's on the house. Hey, but seriously, folks, hey, how are we sounding? Are we good? All right. All right. Okay, good morning and welcome. Thank you all for being patient. It's good to laugh a little this morning, isn't it? Loosen up a little bit before we start. Um, Thank you again for bearing with us as we, as we work through the sound and the video uh, technical difficulties this morning. And thank you to Adam and Tommy and Kevin and everybody who worked so hard to keep this stuff going through the good times and through the rougher times. So whether you're here in the sanctuary today with us or joining us at home via Facebook Live, we're glad you can be here with us. And before we begin, I have a few announcements to share with you. 
who this morning our heartfelt condolences go out to the family of Ricky Simmons, who entered into the immediate presence of the Lord on October 23rd. A graveside service was held at Friedland on October 28th. So please continue to lift up Ricky's family in prayer during this time of loss. We continue to pray for Elaine Thacker, who has been discharged from the hospital. She and her family appreciate your prayers. Kevin Williams' wife, Francis, has been diagnosed with bladder cancer and has an upcoming appointment to find out more information. Please keep the Williams family in your prayers. We also pray for those who have been affected by Hurricane Zeta in recent days, including families left without power by the storms in our nearby communities. We also lift up the families who have lost loved ones on the Gulf Coast, as well as all who are still without power, in the process of repairing damage, or who have been otherwise made vulnerable as a result of the storm. Now, the drive through Taste of the Fair event will be held next Saturday, November the 7th from 4.30 to 8 o'clock p.m. in the parking lot on the picnic shelter side of the church. Proceeds from this event will benefit the church general fund. If you would like to pre-order, there are order forms available at the church. They can be turned in at a box near the mailboxes or also at the church office. Y'all may also pre, uh, submit a pre-order by contacting Lee Ann Haynes or Vanessa Gossett. There are shoe boxes available at the church for Operation Christmas Child. They are located in the hallway near the mail slots. You're invited to choose a box and a pamphlet with instructions and then return the box to the fellowship hall by Sunday, November the 15th. Filled boxes will be delivered to the distribution center on Monday, November 16th. You may also use a shoe box that you have at home, or you may purchase one. And another new option, if you're not comfortable going out to shop, is to go online to SamaritansPurse.org slash OCC and build a personalized box from home. The mission committee would like to thank everyone for participating in this ministry. The deadline for turning in poinsettia orders is Sunday, November the 22nd. Order forms are available here at the church. Now there are separate forms for in honor of and in memory of. So please make sure you pick up or request the correct form. If you need one to be mailed, please contact the office. There will be a box near the mailboxes for y'all to leave your order form in. Order forms can also be mailed back to the church or dropped off at the office. In, in December, Friday and Saturday, the 4th and the 5th, Laurel Ridge will be hosting a Come to the Stable, a drive through Christmas experience from 5 to 8 p.m. And you can find more information about that event on the Laurel Ridge website. Let us go to the Lord in prayer this morning. God, we come to you today walking on the paths of those who have come before us. Those souls who right now are in your more immediate presence. Those souls we seek to emulate. Those who raised us, taught us, and loved us. God, we are inspired by their faith and dedication. And we come to you today wanting to live our lives in their example. We know this is a time that can come with much sadness, anxiety, and doubt. We look forward to the day when we can rejoice with them by your side. But for now, we understand that we must continue to run the race that is set before us. We recognize that we seek direction in this race before us, not from princes, politicians, or rulers of this world, but from you, O oh God. You are the one that orders our steps and restores our souls. You are the one that comforts us in grief and celebrates with us in joy. God, your love for us is incredible. We are because you are. 
though there is much evil in the world and nothing can separate us from your goodness. It is with this certainty that we come today to worship you. We pray these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. And now let us reflect on our opening hymn, Rejoice, the Lord is King. This morning's responsive reading comes from the All Saints Liturgy from the Moravian Book of Worship, the Without Hymns Today, and it is printed in your bulletin. So let's join together in praying the liturgy to the Lord this morning. Behold, a great multitude, which no one can number, out of every nation and of all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb with palm branches in their hands. And they cry with a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. These are the ones of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves on the holes in the ground. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were slain with the sword. They were burned at the stake. They were killed by an assassin's bullet. They were destitute, persecuted, tormented. These are the ones who have come out of great tribulation. They have washed their robes and cleansed them in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God, and they worship day and night in the temple. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and will guide them to springs of living water. 
and God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. Almighty God, Redeemer and Sustainer, we offer you thanks and praise for the holy lives of all your servants, the prophets, apostles, and martyrs who have shown forth as lights in the world and sacrificed their lives in testimony of their faith. We thank you for the triumphant fellowship of all the saints in glory. We remember before you all who have been called to the more immediate presence of the Savior, and especially those most dear to us in our congregation. We rejoice in our present fellowship with them, in our continuing hope, and in the promise of eternal joy. Let the great cloud of witnesses the innumerable company of those who have gone before and entered into rest be to us an example of godly life. May we run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And may we obtain entrance into your eternal kingdom and with the glorious assembly of the saints, worship and adore you. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. If God is for us, who can be against us? Hear the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, who was dead and is alive again. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. To him who loves us, and washed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom. Priests to God, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And our Holy Scripture readings for this Sunday, beginning with Psalm 34. Psalm 34, verses 1 through 10, and verse 22. Praise for deliverance from trouble. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him, and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried, and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you, his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The Lord redeems the life of his servants, None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. From Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. The multitude from every nation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, 
robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might. Be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, They are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. May God bless the reading and the hearing of God's holy word for this Sunday, and all thanks be to God. At this time, we call all of our children of all ages to hear the words of our children's message for this day. In our gospel reading today, which we'll hear soon from Pastor Adam, we hear about one day, one day when Jesus looked around and saw that a huge crowd was following him, coming to be with him. He decided that the best thing to do would be to go up on a hillside and teach his friends all about the kingdom of heaven. It was a sermon we call the Sermon on the Mount. And one special part of that sermon is called the Beatitudes. The word is this word, Beatitudes. It's a word we don't always use much except around church at times, the Beatitudes. And when I think about them, I think about the, the B attitudes, the Beatitudes we hear about from Jesus. And here's what all the buzz was about. It comes from the Latin word, a Latin word which was beatus, from Latin. That word is a word that means, it means blessed. It means blessed, which we often translate it that way, or also as the word happy. It can mean blessed, or it can mean happy at times as well. In the Beatitudes, Jesus tells us who will be happy and who will be blessed in heaven. He tells about where real, true happiness comes from. And you and I probably have our own ideas about what true happiness really means, where that comes from. Sometimes it might seem as if we'd be really happy if we got everything we wanted all the time. Maybe it seems like we'd be really happy if everybody were kind to us all the time. And when you're sick, it might seem like we'd be happy forever if only we were healthy once more. So Jesus talks about these things, these nine things he thought real happiness comes from, and these he called being blessed. Being blessed is like receiving a special amount of happiness that comes directly from God. The truth is that some of Jesus' nine ideas here about what it means to be blessed, they might be hard to understand. I'll tell you about two of them right now. One is that Jesus said we'll be truly blessed, truly happy if we are merciful, if we have mercy for other people. Showing mercy means being kind, being generous. Being merciful means helping people when they need help the most and helping them just because they need it. I like it when people are merciful to me when somebody helps me do something difficult, it makes my life better, and I'm very thankful. 
Jesus had a special reason that we are blessed or happy if we are merciful. He said that if we are merciful to others, others will be merciful to us as well. And a second way Jesus said that we are truly blessed, really happy, is that if we are peacemakers, not pacemakers, but he said peacemakers here. Being a peacemaker means helping other people get along when they have an argument. And when you help them get past it, that means being a peacemaker. Sometimes one of the people having an argument might be you. When you're having an argument, usually you feel very mad or angry. I don't think Jesus meant we have to pretend that we're not mad. I don't think Jesus meant that we could just make our mad feelings go away. I think Jesus was saying here that when we feel mad, we have to make a choice about what we do with these feelings of anger. If we are mad and we choose not to hurt someone or to be violent towards someone, that's one way to be a peacemaker. When we are mad and we choose not to say mean things or do mean things to people, that's one way to be a peacemaker. If we can put our mad feelings into words and work together to solve the problem that made us so mad, then we were helping to make peace. You know what Jesus said then? He said that if we are peacemakers, if we are peacemakers, we'll be called God's own children. These things that Jesus talks about that bring true happiness, they're actually all about the kingdom of heaven. The things he talked about are really all about what God is like. God is always merciful. And so we are blessed if we are merciful also. And God is always working towards peace. And so we are blessed if we are peacemakers also. Jesus reminds us that when we're wanting the same things for ourselves and for the world that God wants for us and for the world, then that is a way we better know that God is with us. Real happiness, true happiness comes when we learn to do the things that come straight from God's heart. And that's what life is all about in the kingdom of heaven. And let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the blessings you provide us here on earth. Help us to be mindful of the needs of all your children, especially the poor, those who are sad and those who are hungry. Remind us that wanting what you want is a blessing we can share with the world. Help us to love others in the same way you love us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Again, we thank you for your flexibility this morning. Uh, things are, <laughs> you never know how things are going to go with technology, and uh, while our video stuff was working fine on Wednesday, you can't predict a power outage. So thank you again for your flexibility. And can you hear us okay still online? Maybe? Hopefully. Okay. We'll hope that you do. Our gospel lesson for today comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, and we hear these words this morning. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now Matthew 5 is a very familiar passage. As John mentioned earlier, this is part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, including the Beatitudes, or the Blessed Are Thee statements. Exactly a year ago, I preached on the parallel gospel from Luke's Sermon on the Plain. And one year ago, I had no idea that 2020 would go the way that it has gone. In my sermon last year, I talked about how folks today often use the term hashtag blessed to describe personal achievement or having abundant wealth. But Jesus doesn't describe being blessed the same way. If being blessed means mourning, being persecuted, being reviled, hungry, and poor in spirit, then most of us would probably say no thanks. I'm good. No need to bless me. And yet here we are where we are. Most of us would also prefer to skip 2020 or pretend that it never happened. Many of us have felt poor in spirit for a number of reasons this year. And this year especially has been a time of mourning. Mourning the loss of how the world used to be, mourning the loss of friends and loved ones who have recently passed away. And today on All Saints Day, we remember those believers who have gone on to be with Jesus. We remember the saints in heaven who struggled in life and are now victorious through Jesus Christ. Looking to the example of the saints in heaven, we can find hope. Because even though things are difficult right now, we can have hope that in the end, things are much better. In the end, we get to be with Jesus, and what a wonderful place that will be. Princess Leia once said that hope is like the sun. If you only believe it when you can see it, you'll never make it through the night. We still have some dark times ahead of us, friends. And we must remember that God's Son, Jesus, will return to bring light to the world. Now, it's all well and good to say that the, the saint's journey of suffering is over. And eventually, when we join the saints in heaven, our struggles will be over as well. But what about right now? Yes, we have hope that the future will be better than our current reality, but what else can we do right now? Right now, it feels like we don't have control over many aspects of our life, including our video technology from time to time. But it doesn't help us to dwell on things we can't control. 
Instead, it's more helpful to concentrate our energy on what we can do. So to understand what we can do right now, we need to further unpack what Jesus means by blessed or blessed in Matthew 5. As John mentioned, the Greek word for blessed can also be translated as fortunate, happy, or receiving God's favor. But in the Beatitudes, blessedness is about the future. In verse 12 of this passage, Jesus says, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. In other words, Jesus is saying, Rejoice about how things will be down the road. Rejoice about your future blessedness. He isn't saying that those who suffer should be happy about their current state of suffering. Now, yes, it's great to be positive. It's great to be optimistic. And it's fine to try to make meaning out of a terrible situation. But sometimes you just need the space to say, this really stinks. For instance, when your spouse has had a difficult day, Instead of trying to solve all of their problems for them, sometimes they just need you to listen and say, this really stinks. The reason why we will rejoice in heaven is because the current reality of earth stinks. We will rejoice in heaven in part because it will be loads better than how things are right now. So while Jesus encourages his followers to rejoice about the future, he also provides a space to lament over the current situation. And perhaps that is what we are called to do right now, is to lament. Lament is a passionate expression of grief or sorrow. Anybody read the book of Lamentations before? If you've read the first chapter of Lamentations in the Old Testament, you will find Jeremiah's lament about the state of Jerusalem after it was destroyed by Babylon. We also find several different psalms of lament in Scripture as well. But to lament in the biblical sense is to express dissatisfaction over the current state of things. Now, we have to be very careful and clear here that lamenting is very different from complaining. Okay, they might sound kind of similar, but nobody likes a complainer because complaining doesn't really help anybody. If you complain about how hot it is or about how bad the bugs are on a camping trip, it's not going to make it any cooler, and it's not going to stop the mosquitoes from biting you either. Now, while lamenting and complaining both suggest dissatisfaction with the current state of things, here is how they're different. And this is important. You still with me? Maybe. Okay. Complaining is done about something. We complain about the weather or things that inconvenience us. We complain about loud noises, strange smells, or when something doesn't quite live up to our expectations. We complain about the behavior of others without doing anything to change what we're complaining about ourselves. So that's complaining. Lamenting. Lamenting is not done about something, but a lament is given directly to God and can be a form of prayer. It's important to know that we don't lament about God. We lament to God because we trust God to hear our prayers and problems in an honest way. Now, an important thing to note in the Beatitudes is that Jesus isn't addressing individuals. John mentioned there was a crowd of people following him, so he is addressing a group. So when we lament, it's important that we do so as a community. Because you see, at times in our lives, maybe we don't feel downtrodden. There are times where we don't feel like we have to mourn. But even in those times, there will always be someone in our community who is mourning. 
There will always be someone who is hungry. There will always be someone who needs relief from a difficult time. So when we lament, brothers and sisters, when we tell God that things really stink right now, it's important that we lament not just for ourselves and the things that are going on in our own lives, but for others who are suffering as well. So when this pandemic is eventually over, what a happy day that will be, when we return back to normal, back to normal won't be great for everyone. Because for many folks, normal was already difficult. For many of our homebound folks, loneliness is normal. For many folks in our community, hunger is normal. For some folks out there, persecution is normal. Mourning is normal. So when we're eventually done lamenting over this pandemic, when our lives return to normal, it's important that we don't forget about our brothers and sisters Lord, we give you thanks for the love that you have for us. We thank you for the saints and for the example they provide to us of your amazing grace. We rejoice for the saints and look forward to the day that we will also join you in your kingdom. Lord, we pray with our whole hearts, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And yet our world is still very different from the heavenly kingdom. Our world is broken and in need of your healing. God of understanding, the people of Israel cried out in the wilderness, and you heard their cries. Hear us now as we lift up our prayer of lament to you. And for those worshiping you here today, Lord, after each Petition to you, O God. Our congregation members are invited to say, Lord, hear our prayer. For our family, friends, and neighbors who are sick or have died this year, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have lost jobs and means of income, Lord, hear our prayer. For our divided nation in need of healing, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel alone, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering from depression, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are hungry, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel stuck in situations beyond their control, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, make us instruments of your peace as we lament on behalf of all of our brothers and sisters. Help us to be a blessing to others in all that we say and all that we do. And Lord Jesus, it is in your name that we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn, 10,000 times 10,000. We pray that you will hear the words in your heart this morning as our church band plays our closing hymn. <laughs>
friends, the saints remind us of our future blessedness. But today, go, be a blessing to others in this world. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, amen. you to please dismiss starting in the rear at our rear pew and then we'll go from there. Go in peace friends. <laughs>